This study was done uh, and specifically bimikizumab looked at in cervical arthritis because uh, of our knowledge of the IL-17, IL-23 axis in the pathogenesis of psoriatic disease, both skin disease as well as the different domains of psoriatic arthritis. Um, and what's unique about bimikizumab is that it is the only monoclonal uh, antibody that selectively inhibits both IL-17A as well as IL-17F, uh, both of which has, have been shown to be uh, important in the pathogenesis of disease. Uh, and I say novel because our IL-17 inhibitor agents to date uh, have targeted um, IL-17A uh, predominantly. And so, um, so that makes this uh, a bit of a novel um, uh, mechanism uh, as such. So there were two studies presented uh, uh, at ULAR 2022 uh, of relevance here to bimikizumab. So one is what's called the B-optimal study. So this was the um, phase three um, uh, study looking at bimikizumab from uh, a, the perspective of both efficacy and safety in patients with psoriatic arthritis uh, who are um, biologic DMARD naive. Um, so that's the one, one study in one population. Uh, and the other um, study and population was bimikizumab's phase three study called B-complete, uh, which is, again, a study of bimikizumab in patients with active psoriatic arthritis, uh, in this case, who had an inadequate response to TNF inhibitors, uh, again, looking at efficacy and safety at uh, week 16 in a, in a uh, placebo-controlled randomized trial. Take-home messages um, from the results really uh, for be optimal to begin with, they certainly met their primary ACR50 endpoint. Um, there was an impressive uh, placebo delta uh, with regard to that ACR endpoint, as well as the ACR20 and 70 endpoints that were looked at as a secondary. Um, in particular, I would say the skin endpoints um, uh, were, were, were quite uh, also impressive. Uh, we saw, for example, a very impressive PASI 100 about, uh, about 56% or so PASI 100 in this study that suggests um, you know, more than half the patients here are getting completely clear from a skin standpoint. So very, very robust skin data, um, also in line with the high uh, efficacy data we've seen from bimikizumab in the psoriasis studies that have been previously reported. In this study, another unique aspect was that there was an active uh, comparator arm of uh, adalimumab, um, and certainly numerically looks, um, looks as good as adalimumab in, um, in these um, key psoriatic arthritis endpoints and, uh, and, uh, and superior with regard to uh, skin efficacy endpoints. And so um, I think that's really the, some of the highlights from the B optimal study. Um, <clears throat> the B complete study, I think is particularly unique and maybe even more relevant uh, in the current uh, uh, landscape, uh, which is looking at a population of psoriatic arthritis patients who have had an inadequate response to at least one or two uh, TNF uh, inhibitors. Um, and again, I think, you know, I say in the current landscape because, you know, we uh, have thought about in many respects TNF inhibition is one of our first-line therapies in psoriatic arthritis. I think increasingly we're accepting IL-17 therapies as you know, as uh, on par as a first-line agent, <clears throat> but at least in the U.S., you know, many of us are asked from, from a payer standpoint to have tried or failed an anti-TNF uh, in the course of therapy. Many of our patients will have cycled through and or failed or had an incomplete response or an adequate response to a TNF inhibitor at some point in their disease, and so it really is crucial for us to have access uh, to therapies like bimikizumab uh, for our patients, and so <clears throat> with that in mind, uh, you know, this was, again, a 16-week study with a primary endpoint of ACR50. Um, this study also met uh, its primary endpoint of ACR50 response at week 16, as well as all of the secondary and ranked secondary endpoints. Uh, you know, I think the take-home messages here, again, were a similarly impressive uh, ACR50, as well as PASI90. Uh, and if I can compare against the two studies for a moment, the data uh, comparing B-optimal and B-complete at this primary endpoint and several of the other endpoints I'll mention were very comparable, meaning that being a, uh, an, a TNF inadequate responder did not seem to dramatically impact the efficacy. And that, you know, is very relevant. And I think, you know, uh, I wouldn't be um, <clears throat> uh, doing a service if I didn't just briefly mention the safety data from both of these that I think was very much um, consistent with what we've seen in prior studies with this mechanism. I think the reason that these results are important for clinical practice, um, one, 
is that uh, we're seeing here some of the highest skin efficacy. And you know, we know that our patients with psoriatic arthritis, not a small number of them have substantial skin involvement. We also know from a variety of studies that patients want to be clear. They want their skin clear. So even though as rheumatologists, we may say we don't always see the most severe of the skin patients in our offices, uh, the truth is patients want to be clear uh, regardless of the amount of body surface area, for example. And so, you know, so that, that's one is the skin. Number two, I think, again, because these, this is a chronic disease, we know that over time patients do tend to cycle through agents and through mechanisms. We need more mechanisms. I mean, we have patients who you know, we'll, we'll be seeing throughout the course of their disease you know, for many, many years, uh, and so we do need other agents to turn to. Um, and I think seeing good safety um, and good efficacy from an agent like this is important to that end. Um, <clears throat> you know, and then uh, lastly, I think seeing a, in particular TNF inhibitor um, inadequate responder population who seems to respond as well as those who um, are biologic DMARD um, naive is also uh, reassuring. You know, may speak a little bit to how important this tar these targets are uh, in the disease state.